the danger of my life at zombie apocalypse. I don't know how we got here exactly. Some say it was a naturally caused virus. Others that it was the result of an experiment that went very, very wrong. And the rest is convinced that the government is responsible. But one thing is certain, for a few years now we've been living in a zombie apocalypse. I am one of the few people who survived the first outbreak at school. It was a day like any other. I was falling asleep in the middle of history class while looking at the clock on the wall waiting for it to be lunchtime. Suddenly screams were heard. <coughs> Those of us in the classroom, we went out to see what was happening. When opening the door, there were many students running down the hall. They came from the science lab and everyone yelled at us to run away from there immediately. And that was when I understood what was happening. At the end of the hall, at the door of the lab, I saw it. It was a zombie. It was wearing a blood-stained lab coat and glasses hanging around its neck. It walked very slowly, dragging one of its feet. And with outstretched hands. Its face was terrifying. The eyes completely white and open, staring at me. It had blood splattered all over its mouth and its grunts bounced off the walls. It was the same as what I had seen hundreds of times in the movies and on TV. But I wasn't in a fictional story with cameras around me. I was in school and this was real life. Suddenly, I heard cracking noises inside the lab. Three more zombies appeared behind the zombie at the door. Two boys and a girl. I could see the bites on their shoulders. And they didn't wear coats. They were students who had had class in the lab. And now they came for us. I wanted to run from there, but I couldn't. I had become paralyzed with fear. Then I felt that they were pulling my arm. It was Alex, one of my classmates, screaming to move and get out of there. But it wasn't until I heard a growl behind me how my legs responded and I managed to escape. At full speed, Alex and I ran around the building looking for the exit. But what we found upon leaving was not what we expected. In the middle of the yard was a horde of zombies. Students and teachers I saw daily through the halls had become creepy creatures. And me and their food. It seemed that it was our end, but then we heard someone calling us. A few meters away next to the soccer field was the school sports equipment store. The door was half open, and I could see a girl sticking her head out, and she signaled us to come in. The heart began to surround us, so without thinking about it, I ran to the store. Alex came in after me and immediately closed the door. Inside, there was a group of students accompanied by the gym teacher. They had sports equipment in their hands to use as weapons. And outside, the zombie grunts were heard. We were all in the same boat. We didn't understand what had happened and we didn't know what was coming. What we did know was that we had to get out of there alive no matter what. That was the start of the group of survivors. That day we were around 20. Today, we only have three. Since then, we have been through a lot. We managed to leave the storm distracting the zombies. We opened the door and with a baseball bat, we crushed their heads in one blow. We used the blood and organs of the zombies as camouflage. And we crossed the hall very carefully. We needed a new hiding place and our initial plan was to move to the school cafeteria. Along the way, we found a cleaning closet with more tools and objects that we could use as weapons. But we soon discovered that escaping from school would be more difficult than we thought. The zombie apocalypse had spread throughout the city. In one of the classrooms, we found a television on. The screen had a last-minute report. A series of videos with zombies appeared walking the streets while scared people ran and shouted in the other direction. While other zombies attacked and bit defenseless people. At that moment, we understood the danger we were in. We did our best to try calling for help with all the phones we could find. But our attempts were useless. All the lines were engaged. Nobody knew that we were here, and that we were alive. After that day, the TV stopped working, and in a short time, the lights also went out. Our plan to stay in the cafeteria failed as soon as we entered. The cafeteria had been overrun by a huge number of zombies. They were all over the tables and in the main bar. We still wore the camouflage, but the smell became increasingly unbearable. It would be best to divide, while some ventured to look for food. The rest would have to find another place to hide but we never met up again. I was in the group responsible for food, so we headed to the cafeteria kitchen hoping to find something we could eat at that time. My nausea increased, the camouflage still worked. As we walked around, the zombies didn't detect our presence. Once inside the kitchen, we set out to explore. 
The fridges had food, but only ones that needed to be refrigerated all the time. So it didn't work for us. We were looking for a long time. I felt it had been hours. Until we were finally lucky. The next room was full of shelves and on them were closed cans. That was just what we needed. We had the brilliant idea to go back to where the tables were and take the backpacks that had been left behind. We would fill them with food and water which we could carry in order to survive. But what happened next ruined the whole plan. I don't know exactly what happened but what I remember is that I was about to leave the room when the sound of metal hitting the ground was heard. One of the shelves had collapsed and the cans and food packages were on the floor. Then loud grunts were heard on the other side of the wall. We were in danger. As expected, we left the room with the shelves to the table area. Hundreds of pairs of eyes looked at me directly, and the camouflage had lost all its power. They had discovered us. I looked at my classmate and his face said it all. If we didn't escape at that moment, we would die. Everything happened too fast. Alex picked up one of the kitchen knives and in an instant jumped the cafeteria bar with the backpack on his shoulders. You just watch him, he looked like a ninja. Alex ran toward the zombies and dodged them in his path. Those who got too close got stabbed in the head. Someone had to help him. I copied Alex and took the kitchen utensils that I could use as a weapon. With the meat tenderizer in my hand, I went to where the tables were. I started to run in the direction of the door and with each zombie that crossed my path I hit them hard with the tenderizer. In a battle of the zombie horde, the most dangerous thing is a group attack. It's hard to get rid of the weight of a hungry zombie, but if it's more than one, it's impossible to survive. The cafeteria had become a war field. But while the number of zombies increased, I was remained the same. I looked all around me, all I saw were zombies approaching. I didn't know if my classmates were okay, until something caught my attention. In the middle of the chaos, I saw Alex escape the zombies, went to the door and leave the cafeteria. I couldn't believe what had just happened. Alex had abandoned me in our fight. It was my end. Suddenly someone appeared at the door. The gym teacher. He was not alone, it was also Alex. The professor carried something on his arm. Then I saw him lift the shotgun and point towards the zombies. Shots were heard throughout the room. The zombies in front of me disappeared, leaving me free. But more appeared on all sides. My friends at the door shouted my name and told me to run. I did what they asked me and I ran to the exit. Just when I was leaving, something unexpected happened. When I got to the door, I heard a yell behind me. I turned and saw an unknown girl running towards us. From the door, we watched as the zombie grabbed her by the backpack, throwing her on the floor. I couldn't escape the sudden movement, and in a matter of seconds, I had several zombies on top of me. Their screams were the last thing we heard before leaving the cafeteria. The teacher asked us to follow him until he found the new hiding place. He took us through the halls of the school quickly, but careful not to find more zombies hanging around the building. We had made enough noise to bring them to the cafeteria. The last thing we needed was to guide them to where we were. We arrived at the infirmary. Upon entering, we checked our bodies immediately for wounds or rights. Fortunately, we found nothing. We opened the food backpacks and counted what we had managed to load. It's been years since the apocalypse began and we haven't moved from the infirmary. We haven't left the school either. From time to time, two of us make an expedition to collect more food and whatever else we need. Whether weapons or coats, if we start to get cold. The last day here, I was waiting alone in the infirmary. They had gone on an engine expedition. We didn't have much left. We barely had half a can of soup to cans of peas and some water. In terms of medicine, we only had bandages. The rest was expired. In addition, the cold began to arrive and what we gathered that first time was diminishing. Finally, Alex and the teacher returned, and with them, a blow of reality. Their backpacks were empty except for a small bottle of water, half full. We had finished with the scarce resources that the school had. There was only one thing left to do, get out of there and venture into the city without knowing what was out there. We knew this day would come. We took the backpacks we had in them, put what little we had left. The teacher forced Alex and her to keep one can of peace. Alex also carried the baseball bat, and I had the kitchen knife and the teacher still had the shotgun. I was always curious to know where he got it, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to find out. Um, the three of us left the infirmary. The halls were completely empty except for bloodstains on the walls and floor. 
The walk was short and it seemed that it wouldn't take us long to get to the exit. It was my mistake to assume that things would go smoothly. We reached the last hall and the back was the front door. I was in the middle, Alex on my right and the teacher on my left with a shotgun pointing forward. Outside I saw several zombies pass in front of the door. We had to walk trying to make as little noise as possible, but the amount of broken glass on the floor complicated things. Suddenly the professor dropped the shotgun to the ground. He took his leg with his hand and let out a shout. I looked down to see what had happened to him, and I got a big surprise. That blood is from the professor's leg to the ground, leaving a mark of the path we had travelled. I lifted the fabric of the teacher's pants and underneath I found what I was most afraid of. The teacher had a zombie bite on his leg dripping with blood. But that wasn't the worst part. The wind was swollen, which implied that there was an infection. Strains of pain meant only one thing. The infection had spread on his leg and the professor had little time left. The zombie growls on the other side of the door distracted me. We were running out of time. The zombies were already at the door and would soon push through. We had to move fast and take the teacher to a safe place. With the shotgun, I pointed to the door, preparing to shoot. At that moment, I heard a growl behind my back, followed by a shout from the teacher. When I turned around, I saw a zombie biting his shoulder, tearing off his skin and tissue. The teacher's screams got louder and suddenly I heard the door breaking. The zombies were entering the building. We were running out of time. Alex took the shotgun from my hands and started shooting at those who were entering. In the distance, more zombies appeared. Once the ones at the door fell, Alex took my hand and we both ran. If there was a moment to escape, it was now we went out the front door and didn't stop until the school was left behind. I started looking at what was around. The street where we were was completely destroyed. On the sides, there were abandoned cars burning with fallen trees on them. I couldn't believe that we had survived the zombie apocalypse inside a school and had managed to escape alive. Who will we meet in the city? I don't know. Are we the only humans alive? No idea, but we'll find out soon. What did you think about this zombie apocalypse story? If you like these stories, don't miss the adventure of Fix and Camille on the Epic Blast channel. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.